The great English visionary artist William Blake was born in Soho, London, in 1757. He was the third of seven children, two of whom died in infancy. When William was ten years old, his parents knew enough of his headstrong temperament that he was not sent to school, but instead educated at home and enrolled in drawing classes. Throughout his adolescence, he read avidly on subjects of his own choosing, such as mythology and anthropology. At the same time, he wrote poetical sketches, his first collection of poetry and prose, which was printed in 1783. At the age of 15, he was apprenticed to engraver James Basire for a term of seven years. At the end of which he enrolled at the Royal Academy. The only exhibition he had in his lifetime was held in 1809 in his family's haberdashery and hosiery shop, and it was a flop. Few saw it, nothing sold, and the only critic to review it described the artist as an unfortunate lunatic. The exhibition's centerpiece consisted of two allegorical portraits: William Pitt the Younger, got in Behemoth, and Admiral Horatio Nelson, got in Leviathan. Pitt the Younger was a prominent British Tory statesman, while Horatio Nelson was a flag officer in the Royal Navy. In the early 1790s. Blake wrote several poems in which he expressed an attitude of rebellion against the abuse of class power and the blighting effects of the Industrial Revolution. He believed in racial and sexual equality. He campaigned against tyranny, oppression, and prejudice through his radical network across the Western world. In particular, while he lived in London and southern England his entire life, he maintained an amiable relationship with the American activist Thomas Paine. Blake believed America would one day end all forms of discrimination, so that all races could live in harmony, and women might claim their own sexuality. These concepts are beautifully summed up in his engraving called. Europe supported by Africa and America, which depicts three attractive women embracing one another. Blake's continental prophecies, as well as his visions of the daughters of Albion, gave new meaning to the cultural history of Europe, Africa, and America. In 1777, Vermont became the first country to abolish slavery. Which was declared illegal throughout the British Empire 30 years later, and further confirmed by the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833. Blake was employed as an engraver by the Unitarian bookseller Joseph Johnson, who was associated with a group of prominent radicals, including Mary Wollstonecraft and William Godwin. Blake felt that there was a strong connection between the American and French revolutions, and that these two events had a universal and historical impact. In the poem *The French Revolution*, Blake describes the problems of the feudal system and the corruption of the French monarchy and church. In the prophetic book *America*. Albion, that is the giant who founded Britain, believes Orc is the Antichrist. On the other hand, Orc, being the embodiment of the American colonies, sees the King of England as evil incarnate. Blake despaired with the rise of Robespierre and the reign of terror in France, and realized that irresponsible mercantilism. Had come to replace monarchy. England, 
influenced by France, started to impose laws which restricted the freedom of individuals and opposed most civil democratic activities. The phrase dark satanic mills, which entered the English language in the 19th century, originated from a passage in Blake's prophetic books referring to London's decadence in its early industrial age. And I quote, Did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountain green? Was the holy lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? Did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? Was Jerusalem built here among these dark satanic mills? Blake's thoughts on human nature and society greatly anticipate and parallel the thinking of Carl Jung and Karl Marx. Blake was influenced by John Milton, Dante Alighieri, and Emanuel Swedenborg. Blake, in his turn, had an enormous influence on the beat poets of the 1950s and the counterculture of the 1960s. He is even considered a forerunner of the 19th century free love movement, in that he was critical of traditional marriage laws and Christian notions of chastity as a virtue. In 1794, Blake wrote the poem called London, in which he revealed his feelings toward the society he lived in. He wrote of his city as a resident to illustrate the effects of modernity on people and nature through the discussion of dangerous industrial conditions, child labor, prostitution, and poverty. And I quote, I wander through each chartered street near where the chartered Thames does flow. A mark in every face I meet, marks of weakness, marks of woe. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every band, the mind-forged manacles I hear. How the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldier's sigh runs in blood down palace walls. But most, through midnight streets, I hear how the youthful harlot's curse blasts the newborn infant's tear and blights with plagues the marriage earth.